Hey there, I'm Florian, I'm the host of this show. And if you're one of those people who want to look beyond all this marketing hype of all the manufacturers and want to know how video analytics actually work, this session is for you. All right, let's dive right in. Today we're talking about how video analytics actually work under the hood. Um, because this kind of topic is not so often described in a very easy to consume way. Usually you see a bunch of stuff of manufacturers and marketing material, but today we want to discuss how this actually works under the hood in just a few minutes. And um, just to be clear, I'm talking about how video analytics typically work today. So one of the things to, to, to remember is that um, today in, the, in an age of deep learning, machine learning, AI, um, things typically work in a certain way, but that's not the only way, not the, not, the, not the only way how you can do video analytics. And especially it has, there have been a lot of approaches in the past. If you uh, want to do video analytics for a specific purpose, there are many specific purpose built approaches um, to do, for example, crowd estimation or perimeter protection or people counting or weapons detection. So all of these things, they're very specialized approaches, but I'm gonna give you an overview over how it works um, for very typical applications. So um, the person tracking, things like forensic search, um, cross-line detection, and so on. All right, so um, when you see a product where they say they do AI or um, it uses AI or uh, deep learning or machine learning or so on, um, that can be a little bit confusing because usually only a part of the whole video analytics actually leverages deep learning or machine learning. Um, it might sound like they do everything with deep learning or machine learning, but it's actually only a part of the whole, whole, whole process that you can use to, uh, to, to do all this uh, smart stuff, all the analytics. So, all right, so let's dive into the three main steps that you use for a typical video analytics application. And these three steps are detection, tracking, and reasoning. All right, so let's go into the first one, detection. What is detection? Detection is the typical thing that you usually see when you um, when you see examples of deep learning or machine learning. Uh, here we have, uh, I searched for a nice image. This actually is the St. Stephen's Cathedral here in this beautiful Vienna where I am right now. Uh, and this shows a typical uh, detection algorithm. So what does it mean? Um, there's classification and detection. Classification basically means um, you show the, uh, the deep learning network an image and it tells you this is a person, this is a dog, this is a bicycle. But detection goes uh, a step further and detection tells you not only this is a human, as we see here, or this is a bag, or this is a bicycle, or a building, it shows you where it is in the image. Uh, and this is what you see with this, um, what's called the bounding box. So it shows you the coordinates in the image of where this object is. And this is very important for typical video analytics applications because you're not interested typically to know that in this image there is a person, you're interested in where is this person. Um, and, this, uh, and these are the typical images that we usually see when we see uh, machine learning or deep learning. Um, but this is just one step and this is the step where you typically use AI or deep learning or machine learning. Uh, for, like for this purpose, we're all talking about the same thing. Um, because this is just detecting in a single frame that there is a human in this case. But it doesn't help you a lot because your application might be people counting, for example. So you're not interested only in there, there being a human, but you want to know more. So you go to the second step, and the second step is tracking. And what tracking does is it takes it these detections in each frame, and it tries to search for the same objects on a frame by frame basis. So it tries to track this object through time. And that might be a person, it might be a vehicle, it might be something else. But the idea is how can you connect these frames and be sure that this is the same person? Because only then you know what this person did, like where did it move or where did it go and so on. So you need this information to do almost all video analytics applications. And this is exactly what tracking does. Tracking takes this information, you see these bounding boxes as we saw before, but now we have movement through time. So we know where through time this objects moved. And these are these um, 
interesting lines here that we call trajectories. Uh, and then you, then, then you know that this is the same person that moved through time. And in fact, it's not the previous step, it's not detection, that's the big research topic or that's the big challenge in video analytics, but it's really the second step that's called tracking. And in tracking, typically, no deep learning approaches are being used nowadays because uh, it's, um, it's pretty resource intensive. There are, in, in research, there are approaches that you uh, can train how a person moves and so on, but this is very in the early stages. Nowadays, what you do, you use deep learning to detect the objects, and then you have some other tracking algorithms that are from classical computer vision, which is being around still a lot, to connect these different frames. And these are, for example, is, um, is in the same area or is in the same position. Is there a person detected as in the previous frame? Then it's likely the same person. There are other approaches where you calculate an ID of this specific person and try to match this ID to the next frame, although that's, um, that's quite recent. So it's only recently been used. And there are some others, but in any way, you have to try to understand that this is the same person from an image to, to image um, um, perspective. So this is a big research topic, but also this doesn't give you a product. It doesn't give you an application. So what you need is the third step, which is reasoning. And reasoning means is that you connect all the dots, you connect all this application, all these detections um, into an application. So you take these tracking things and for example, for people counting, you define a line. And when, this, when a person crosses this line, you count it. And also this is not a deep learning application. This is, uh, this is classical um, rules-based uh, analytics. This is uh, part of computer vision and is combined with the deep learning stuff in order to create business value out of your, uh, out, out of your video analytics. And this is exactly what you see here where people cross the line, and when they cross the line, then the counter goes up by one. So with all of these three steps, with detection, tracking, and reasoning, you have a full video analytics application, and I'm not talking about any backend and so on. Of course, it's a bunch of other stuff to it, but the thing to remember here, it just doesn't give you a whole video analytics application just by being able to just detect some stuff in an image by using some open source library that doesn't give you a product. You really need all these steps. You need to detect something, you need to track it through frames, and then you need some uh, rules, rules engine on top of it to do the reasoning and create your actual use case. All right, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. We talked about how video analytics work in just a few minutes. We will have more uh, deep dive tech sessions in the future, but this is really to prepare you for all the videos and all the features that we will talk about in the future. Thanks for being here. Please do not forget to subscribe if you're not already. This is super important. And otherwise, have a great day and see you next time.